Let us pray. Our Father in glory, we praise your name. We praise your mercies. We praise your goodness. We praise your love. Righteous Father, we praise you for the testimonies, for the revelations, for the miracles, for the wonders you are doing in the midst of the chosen. That in glory, we bless you for bringing us before you this hour. Oh, we are asking you, righteous Father, have your way in the midst of your people. Amen. Father, walk on us. Make us holy. Make us, every one of us, that which you want us to be in Jesus' name. Make us Christ-like in thought, in ways, in actions, in disposition, in every area to your glory in Jesus' name. Every contrary thing, every plant which you have not planted in us, Father, I command it to be uprooted. I pray that you walk on us and make us every withhold inside and outside your glory in Jesus' name. Every contrary spirit I take authority in heaven over you. I bind every spirit of wandering thought, every spirit of distraction, every spirit of impatience and unbelief, every spirit of slumbering and sleeping, I bind you, I bind your power, I cast abyss in Jesus' name. I lose your power, O oh God. Let your power come upon the church. I pray power of conviction, power of sanctification, power of holiness, let it come upon the church in Jesus' name. I cover here with the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost, take over and bless every soul in Jesus' name. Shall we get seated? Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I read verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua chapter 3. Reading verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I read verse, from verse 3. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessels in sanctification and honor. And so, from these uh, chapters and verses, I'm bringing to you the topic sanctification sanctification and honor sanctification and honor our father in heaven is holy is perfect in purity he has no item of sin there is no unrighteousness in God everything about God is pure, purity, perfect. If you look at the Bible in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 26. Leviticus chapter 20. Please open your Bible. I read verse 26. And you shall be holy unto me. 
For I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. No wonder he does not behold iniquity. God is holy. He does not dwell with unholy people. And the Bible said in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13, Thou art pure, thou art of a pure eyes than to behold evil and cannot and canst not look on iniquity. God is holy. God is a perfect God. He does not do away with unholy people, nor behold evil. In Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 7, I read from verse 12, Joshua chapter 7, look at verse 12, and it reads, Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except you destroy the cost from among you, or sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourself against tomorrow. For those say the Lord God of Israel, there is an accosting in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thy enemies until you take away that constant from among you. And so, because of sin, the Lord God Almighty would draw from the children of Israel when they went to this battle. And the Lord said, I cannot be with you except you destroy that constant. So, God does not behold evil, nor the way with unholy people. Remember, he created us in his nature of holiness until the fall of man in the garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 27. Genesis chapter 1. I read verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So it is very clear God created us in his nature of holiness, of purity, before the fall of man. And if you look at the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, you will see what happened at the Garden of Eden. Chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they see thick leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among us the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 
So immediately after the fall of man, when man have disobeyed God, sinned, they lost the divine nature of holiness. And they started hiding, they was afraid. When they had the voice of God, they couldn't stand anymore. He couldn't be able to stand before God. He was afraid. He was hiding because he has lost the divine nature of holiness. And if you look at verse 23, instead of God dwelling with man in that garden, allowing man to remain in that garden, he drove them away. In verse 23, chapter 3, verse 23, I read, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, send him out to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every, everywhere to keep the way of tree of life. God sent them away out of the garden of Eden. He drove them out, least they will go ahead and eat the tree of life and live in sin forever. So he drove them away. And since after the fall, man possessed the evil nature, Adamic nature, which is full of evil, full of wickedness, unrighteousness. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, please open your Bible. Romans chapter 3. I read verse 23. For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. The sin of Adam has made us, all human beings who came into the world, through a man and a woman contact, to become sinners, to lose the divine nature of holiness, the glory. And if you look at Ephesians chapter 2, I read verse 1. Everyone born of man and woman, because of the fall of Adam, all have sinned. We took part in that divine, I mean that wicked nature of the devil after the fall. In Ephesians chapter 2, I read from verse 1. And you had the quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. We are in, in time past. You walk according to the course of the war, of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation, our lifestyle in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Everyone born of man and woman, took part in this sinful nature. Before we became born again, we lived in that kind of nature, nature of unrighteousness, in the depraved nature, the nature that is, is prone to evil, to unrighteousness, to wickedness. Every man, every person born of a man and a woman, and so, whoever now wants to become a child of God, whoever that wants to return that or restore, recover that very divine nature of righteousness, of holiness, whoever that wants to be a child of God, I want to let you know such person must be born again. If you are not born again, no matter how righteous you claim to be, no matter your religion, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot be said to be a child of God. 
you can never have that nature that Adam lost at the garden of Eden. That divine nature of God, of holiness. No wonder you must be born again. In John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3. Please open your Bible. Chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I saw unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, You must be born again. So the point is, if you must be a child of God, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. That means you must be born again by the Word of God, by the Holy Ghost. Once you hear the Word of God, you are convicted and your life is transformed. You become a new creature. Any person who wants to be a child of God must surrender his or her life to Jesus Christ and accept him as his or her Lord and personal Savior. And when the Spirit of God comes upon you, he will destroy the Adamic nature. He will implant in you the Spirit of God that make one to recover the glory that was lost. That make one to live in holiness again. If you look at your Bible, in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, 1 John chapter 3, I read verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Devil is the author of sin. Is the one that made Adam and Eve to sin. Devil had been sinning from the beginning. When he disobeyed God and was cast out of heaven, his work was to make people to sin. He's the father of sinners. And so, if one continues in sin, say, he is of the devil. But look at what followed. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to destroy the Adamic nature and to implant in us the nature of God, the Spirit of God. Look at verse 9. He said, whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin, for the seed of God remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. When you are born again, born of God, you have the Spirit of God in you, and you will not go on to commit sin. And that's why he said you must be born again. Praise the Lord. So anybody who wants to answer a child of God and his secrets for righteousness, must be born again. It is a must. Take note. Apart from that, I want you to understand that from our salvation, once you are born again, we enjoy the newness of life. I say we enjoy the newness of what? Life. Now, as we begin to enjoy the newness of life, I want you to understand something. The root 
of this sin that was cut down as salvation still remains if one did not break through to sanctification, that root will remain there, and before you know it, it will begin to spring up again. Before you know it, begin to see bitterness, unclean thought, begin to see anger, begin to see bitterness. When that root of sin is not uprooted by going for the def second definite work of grace, which is called sanctification. If that root is not taken away, I want to let you know before you know it, that sin will spring up again and you might go into actual sin which will hinder you from making heaven. So you need sanctification. Praise the Lord. I said everybody that is born again need what? Sanctification. That is the second definite work of grace. Or such person must pray through to total eradication of Adamic nature that God will take away the root. Such person wish or take notes. Such things which one stopped doing after your salvation without dealing with this second work, without submitting yourself to ensure that that second work of grace is achieved. Before you know it, as I told you before, those things will begin to grow up again. Those things will begin to manifest again. And I've told you before, unclean thought and anger and bitterness, that's why we must pray through to sanctification. So, we must be sanctified to be pure, to be holy, to have the presence of God and his wonders upon our life even as of old. Praise the Lord. I said we must be sanctified. If you are born again, if you are not born again, you must be born again and you must be sanctified. And if you are born again, today we must pray through to sanctification. Even if we are sanctified, you need to pray for maintenance and preservation. We must grow in grace. And so as to have the presence of God with us always and to make heaven at last. And so in this message, which I consider the flowing of headings. One, take note, the necessity of sanctification and living a sanctified life. Two, the benefit of sanctification and the danger of unsanctified life. Take note of this point. Let's go straight away to point number one the necessity of, of sanctification and living a sanctified life. We all should understand that God is holy as we have been told in the introduction and created us to be holy. God created us to be like him in holiness. And that's why he told the Israelites, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. So, and as a result of the fall of man, as I've been told in the introduction, he lost the divine nature of God, divine nature of holiness. And we saw the scripture confirmed that said, for all have sinned. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everyone, born of a man and woman, as a result of the fall of Adam, have sinned and possess the wicked nature of the devil, as we see in Ephesians 
chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. We read it before. That we all had our life, live this kind of life, before we eventually, some of us, and many of us are here today, before we became born again. We, were, we live in that sinful nature, that fallen nature. So, man began to love and to do evil because of the nature of the devil, which was transferred to us at the fall of man, at the garden of Eden. And you know that every works of the devil is evil. He is the father of evil. In fact, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, let's read it. It says, John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, it reads, look at the Bible, chapter 10, verse 10, uh, the thief cometh not, but for to keep, to steal, and to destroy. And so, his work is evil. He has come to destroy the divine nature of man. And he accomplished that through Adam and Eve. And then transfer his wicked nature in man. That everyone born of a man and a woman began to live in wicked lifestyle, in unrighteousness, which make it a must for anyone to become a child of God to be born again. But the fact is that as many who are born of a man and woman have possessed the demonic, satanic nature of sin, which was transferred to our first parents. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28, let's read it. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. I read chapter 1 and verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Take note. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, Maniginity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse that one, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death? Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do that. The point is, after the fall of man, what man was filled with unrighteousness. They received the rejected heart and began to do things that is contrary to the will of God. They were living in all kinds of evil. And there was nothing good in man immediately after the fall. They began to live their life as their flesh. The rest them as their flesh will compare them. But at our salvation, this evil nature like a tree was cut down as I told you before. It was cut down. But the root still remains. At our salvation, I want to let you know that the root, even when we are born again, the root remains. And that's what you see in John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, we are not reading. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, you say, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So I want us to understand after salvation, that root that still remains must be uprooted. We must not entertain anything evil again. Like our salvation experience, we must quickly go for higher experience once we are born again. We must go to the higher experience of sanctification to have the root of sin or Adamic nature uprooted from our hearts, which if it remains, will it begin to grow again as we have been told. You grow, begin to grow into all evil and the evil you have left in time past. So we must pray through to sanctification, which is called the second definite work of grace. Once you are born again, you step up higher. Pray that God will sanctify you and make you pure. Take note of that. And remember, it is the will of God that you must be what? Sanctified. Let's go back to that scripture again. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I read verse 3. Look at your Bible. And it says, For this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. Now you should abstain from fornication. I want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, it is the will of God. And the, so long it is the will of God, Every child of God must not stop at salvation. When you are born again, you must do the will of God by growing through to sanctification. Asking God, do your work. Sanctify me. Make me pure. Make me holy. It is the will of God. Let nobody say, what is sanctification? How can I up, you know, how can I go after I am born again? How do we talk about sanctification again? I want to let you know it is the will of God, even our sanctification. So if you are born again, that will of God must be done in your life. You must be sanctified. You must live life free of all unrighteousness, life full of purity, holiness. If you look at verse 4, look at that place we're reading. Verse 4, it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Every one of us must ensure we live a Christian life in sanctification and honor, in purity and honor, in purity and power. Everyone that's born again. And so, if you are born again, the question now is, are you sanctified? If you are not sanctified, then that is a very big problem. If you are not sanctified, something is still outstanding and something needs to be done. And that urgently. If you want to return the presence of God, if you want to experience the honor, if you want to experience the power of God and the lifestyle of, uh, of God, I want to let you know you need to be sanctified. And so many people, because they stop at salvation, they can't understand whether they are born again or not. So the question is, are you sanctified? When sanctification is achieved, and I told you, sanctification is like, you know, when you are born again, you don't know how it happened. It happened, it takes place immediately as acceptance of Jesus Christ. Now, sanctification also takes place immediately. It wants you, you pray to God, having known that which is lacking in you, which is the will of God, and say, God, sanctify me. And God does it instantly. He will take away the root of sin. 
and you find that there will be no longer unrighteousness or struggle to live the Christian life in you. And so, once you are sanctified, you'll be filled with all the fruit of the Spirit. There will be no longer unrighteousness. That's why we talk about sanctification and honor. Take note, you must maintain once it is achieved, that means you are sanctified, you must maintain it. You must guide it. You don't do what you like. You can't say, because I'm sanctified now, I can look at any nude picture. I'm sanctified now, I can talk anyhow. Once you're sanctified, you need to maintain it by prayers and, you know, keeping to the instructions given to you by teachings in the Word of God. Now, there is need for you to understand when one is sanctified you will live a life void of anger anger will be very far from you if you are sanctified I want to let you know those who are sanctified sometimes you find out what happened to them somebody can match them somebody can offend them because they have life of purity. They are the people at the same time say to somebody that match them, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Somebody match them. And it's a person come around and say to the person that match him, I'm sorry. Somebody offended you. You turn around and say to somebody that offended you, please forgive me. Because of what? You maintain purity. You don't want to entertain anything that is unrighteousness. And so, such people are living life void of anger. They don't go into such lifestyle at all, at all. Besides, they maintain purity on every side. Such people will live life void of evil thought, immoral thought, unclean thought. Those who are thinking evil always is because they are not sanctified. And so, if you find the praises of these things I'm mentioning, why you claim to be born again, you must be sanctified. I talk about evil thoughts, envy, hatred, division, self, pride, talkativeness, murmuring, bitterness, and unforgiveness. If these things are there and springing up, you know that you need to cry to God to uproot the root of sin and make you pure. If you allow these things, you cannot be able to make it because you can't talk of being holy at the same time, angry, and be holy at the same time, envious, and be holy at the same time, murmuring, or having unclean thought, immoral thought. That's why you need to go for this experience. Ask God to do what? Or prove the root of sin. Sanctify you. Praise the Lord. So, you need to search your life. As many of you that profess to be born again, you need to go press on to sanctification so that you live life free of unclean thought and unrighteousness. As many who, have, who are not sanctified, such person will still be full of speaking evil and doing evil. If you are born again, you will not speak, if you are, not, if you are sanctified, you will not speak evil. You will not do evil. You will not like to even look at evil. Such person will ensure holiness inside and outside. Such person will maintain peace, love, humility, faithfulness, goodness, mercy, compassion, joy, 
and selflessness. That person is living his life for Christ. That person is full of love. Any person that is sanctified, that person will blossom in in all the fruit of righteousness. And so the question is, are you sanctified? Those who are sanctified, I want to let you know, they will maintain peace with one another, gentleness, long-suffering, obedience. They will speak the truth from the heart. They will never lie. Such people will be holy. They will be perfect, which is the commandment of God. He said, be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. If you find such imperfection of unrighteousness, unrighteous thoughts, or bitterness, and anger, and grief, you need to pray, O oh Lord, sanctify me. It is the will of God. You must check your life. If you are not sanctified, you don't need to continue to run the Christian left, uh, uh, right, in, in between two or, you know, opinion, whether you are self or not self. Run Christian rest, you know, with uh, lack, of, lack of assurance of where you are going or being a child of God. Because unrighteousness will create a lot of doubt. Unrighteousness will make you to be wondering, are you saved? I want to let you know, many people have received salvation, but the problem they have in their life is that they are not sanctified. But today, as God is bringing this message, I believe that the Holy Spirit is here to achieve that in your life in Jesus' name. That every member of this church must be what? Sanctified. That's what God wants to achieve. So that there will be no more unrighteousness. There will be no more evil thought. No more anger. No more retaliation. No more speaking evil, seeing evil, doing evil. No more entertaining anything evil. Your heart will be full of love, of peace, of joy, of meekness, compassion. I pray that that shall be our portion today in Jesus' name. So let's go for perfection. Every one of us. Don't stop at salvation. There are so many people that say, I am born again, and that that is all. My friend, if you are born again, that is something the scripture said, which I need to read. Praise the Lord. You are born again, but let us step forward. Let us move forward in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principle, principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto what? Let us go on to what? Perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead words and of faith towards God. Let us go on towards perfection. Let's go on to holiness, to purity. Let us not every day we are involved in you know, repentance. We are you know, still dwelling in repentance. And my friend, today, let us go on towards perfection, impurity, holiness. Let us be as our Father, which art in heaven. He say, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. And he say, you shall be perfect, for your Father is what? Perfect. That takes us to point number two. The benefit of sanctification and danger of unsanctified life. The sanctification experience is the most joyful Christian life. Once you are sanctified, you will enjoy Christianity. Are you hearing me? All those who are not sanctified, 
they struggle with their Christian rest, their Christian life, that full of, you know, bitterness, that full of uncertainty, that full of, uh, you know, um, lack of assurance. They are full of unclean thoughts. So that if you don't wonder, are they, will they ever make heaven? My friend, if you want to make heaven, let us go on to what? I'm not hearing you. Let's go to perfection. Let's go to second work of grace, definite work of grace, which is called what? Sanctification, perfection. So, such those who are sanctified, such a person will have the assurance of making heaven at last. Of course, when there is nothing standing between you and God, my friend, you will have assurance of what? Making heaven. When you are holy, when there is purity, the assurance will be there. Nothing like whether you make it or not, you will make it in Jesus' name. Or such person will be holy and will never entertain evil thought. Those who are sanctified, he or she will be holy and will never entertain evil thought. Rather, such person will have genuine love from the heart, forgiveness, mercy will flow in from you, compassion, brokenness, meekness and humility as I've told you. Such a person will enjoy the presence of God always to the extent that he will answer your prayers. Praise the Lord. I say God will do what? When you pray in righteousness and purity, honestly God will answer you. Besides that, God will speak to you whether in dream, revelation, whether or sometimes you hear a voice and that voice will direct you on what to do. You will hear God telling you, don't do this, don't go there. You, because the presence of God is with you. Because you are keeping to purity, you have become a partner and a child of God. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will always be with you, always. And you cannot be in want of anything. Praise the Lord. So, you need to ensure that this experience will be yours today in Jesus' name. Such people, I want to let you know God will use you. If you are sanctified, God will use you to help others. We use it to evangelize, to win souls, and also to achieve the same, you know, sanctification experience and every area of Christian life, the life of others. So he will use you and he will bless you. And in fact, his presence will never depart from you. In fact, Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? You should understand that God is holy. And if you want to walk with God, be with God, you must be what? Holy. That's why in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, it says, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. So we must press for it because it is the will of God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, let's read. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no eye shall see the Lord. So whoever that wants to see God and be with God, you must maintain holiness and peace with all men. And this can only be achieved when you are sanctified. Praise the Lord. So we must go for it. In First Peter chapter 1, and verse 15. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. And I read chapter 1, 
and verse 15. First Peter. But I see which has called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy in thought, in words, in action, in disposition, in comportment, in every area. Because God is holy. And you can't be holy without sanctification. So if you are sanctified, I'm assuring you, you shall be holy. And God shall be with you. So we must ensure. Look at what he says in verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So we must obey the Lord and pray through to sanctification. And as we want to do this, which is will, the Bible says it is the will of God. Even what? Even sanctification. Look at this place in the Bible. In John chapter 8, verse 29. John chapter 8, and verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. Does sanctification please him? Is he the will of God? And he said, he that sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. He says, it, it is the will of God, even our sanctification. Therefore, this will of God must be done in your life today. So that God will never leave you. Wherever you go, you find the presence of God. And you shall never be in want of anything. And in fact, heaven at last shall be a portion in Jesus' name. If you look at the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Re Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. And I read. Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay any charge? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. And so my sisters and brothers who are here today, if you are sanctified, if you maintain purity, God will be with you. Nothing can be against you. Nobody will lay anything to the charge of God's elect. Nobody will condemn you. God will give you all things. Are you hearing me? The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So my prayer is that today and onward, every Tuesday will go for sanctification and be sanctified and live a sanctified Christian life. And heaven at last shall be our portion in Jesus' name. So, everyone must press on to be sanctified. No matter what it will cost you. Or you might have fasted or waited and listening to me, you must ensure sanctification. If, even though you have fasted and prayed and it has taken you all that I want to let you know the no amount of thing you will do to be sure that you are sanctified that is too much. So if you have fasted and prayed and nothing happened today as I pray for you, there are many people struggling to live the Christian life. What they need is to know the truth and the truth shall make them free. There are people struggling. Lord, I want to live a holy life. And they're struggling. They want to know why they're into all this. They're fasting and praying. But what you need is what? I'm not hearing you. What you need is sanctification. 
the Bible said, it is the will of God. So, no matter how long you have fasted and prayed, and yet you can't live holy life, till there you shall know the truth. What happened? What do you really need? Answer me. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, you might have fasted, prayed to stop this and stop bitterness and stop unclean thoughts, and nothing happened. Today, you need to do the will of God. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, I read verse 3, chapter 4 and verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Verse 7. For God, verse 7. For God has not called us, called us unto uncleanness. But unto holiness, take note. Praise the Lord. God has not called us unto what? Unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Therefore, let us ask the Lord in this uh, service today to sanctify you. Let his will be done in the area of what? Sanctification. Sanctification marks the end of impure thoughts. A Christian without sanctification is a baby Christian. And such baby Christian must grow or mature to sanctification for to make for sanctification make for power of God in your life and heaven at last. Praise the Lord. Sanctification make for what? Power. It may for heaven at last. If you want to experience the power and presence of God, you must be what? Sanctified. And look at First Corinthians chapter 3. Baby Christians, they manifest a lot of carnality because of unsanctified Christian life. But today, I believe, as we press on to this second definite work of grace, God will work it out in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Remember these people, what the apostle called them what? I didn't hear you. He called them brethren, which means these people were born again. Praise the Lord. Look at that place. He said, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So they were born again, but they are what? Carnal. Because they were not sanctified, and there was all kinds of uh, lifestyle which is contrary to godliness, which is contrary to the will of God, manifesting in them. And that's why I say they are kinda. And I want to let you there are many, many people, even many chosen members, and many people who profess to be Christian, but they are kinda. Now, but praise the Lord. If you look at that place, you see the features of carnality and unsanctified life. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither 
yet now are ye able. Verse 3. For you are yet what? Kana. For whereas that is among you what? Envy and strife and divisions. Are you not kana and walk as men? For the apostle was seen the mark of carnality, the mark of unsanctified Christian life. There were envy, strife, and all these things were going on among them. And yet they are children of God, but they needed to be what? I'm not hearing you. Sanctified. It could be a case now. We know that you are a child of God, coming to church, doing the work of God, but there is envy, strife, there is contention and divisions. My friend, you must move up to what? Sanctification. And you shall be a blessed person in Jesus' name. Remember, that full of peace with all men and holiness. Wish it out. No eyes shall see the Lord. My prayer is that you will not stop at salvation. Are you hearing me? You will not continue to live life of uncertainty, the lack of assurance of making heaven at last. You will not continue to live in unholiness, in impurity. You will not continue to live in contention and strife and envy and bitterness and anger. Those things will be uprooted as we pray today in Jesus' name. Remember, the Bible says, if you are here now, you want to get this thing. It said, ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, does what? Today, as you ask for inner purity, the second definite work of grace, with all your heart, God will do it for you. Remember, the Bible said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. What happened? They shall be filled because it is the will of God. So if you pray for it today, God will sanctify you in Jesus' name. Remember, let us go on to what? I'm not hearing you again. To perfection. No, let nobody stop in salvation experience. You shall be perfect. Find the Lord your God is what? So, and the danger of the danger abound for those who are not sanctified. Such people will not enjoy their Christian life or the presence of God always. Such people will sin. They will, before you know, they must lie and miss this heaven. So, I want to let you know if you're a genuine believer, let us go for what? Sanctification. The Bible says, sanctify yourself. We must pray through to it so that everybody here will begin to live life of purity. That come what may, we are not going to find people that entertain evil thoughts, people that are envy and angry and bitterness and the murmuring and speaking evil and doing evil and looking at evil and have unforgiving heart God forbid everybody must be what? sanctified so we can listen to me somebody who has been a backslider you want to be a, a child of God and you go into you know fornication and adultery and fighting and you are now, when we say, let us pray, we say, God, sanctify me. No, you need to repent of your sin. Return back to God and ask God to restore you. I don't, don't, don't pray for something. Once you are restored, you can now say, God, sanctify me. Praise the Lord. If you are not restored from your best leading, you can't be praying for sanctification. What do you need to pray for? What? I'm not hearing you. For restoration. Well, there are some people now, maybe they are sleeping and going into wickedness, into terrible sin. And then when we say, let us pray and say, God, sanctify me, sanctify me. No, you need to ask God, restore me. I'm sorry, I've gone away from the faith. I return back to you. Show me mercy. Grant me salvation. Praise the Lord. Now, 
and those who are in the faith, you have not gone into actual sin, and what you are seeing is just, you know, unclean thought and bitterness and anger and strife and envy and talkativeness and looking at what you should not look at or drive pleasure from. You need to cry to God today, sanctify my heart or prove the root of sin. And God will do it in your life in Jesus' name. So today, God is said to do wonders in your life work on you and make you pure so and when that happens we shall see the glory of God we shall see the presence of God we shall be sure of making heaven at last in Jesus name so don't forget it is the will of God even you are sanctification so as I round up I want to remind, remind those who are not yet born again if you are not born again by a backslider, please confess your sins. Forsake them. Tell the Lord you are very sorry. You will never go back to them anymore. Ask God to forgive you of any kind of wickedness you have done in time past. You should understand that a Christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a Christian. I want you to understand. The Bible said, what we read before? Let's read it again as we are concluding now. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil seen it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For he still remained to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. I want to remind you. Verse 8 says, a sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, a Christian is not a sinner. And what is sin? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, a, he said, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. I want to let you know that selfishness is sin. Anger, hatred, lying, all these are terrible things. Keeping malice, bearing grudge, lusting after evil things, covetousness, love of money, love of the world. All these are terrible sins. You need to confess them, renounce them, ask for mercy. Unfaithfulness, envy, pride, lying. All these are terrible sins. Murmuring, backbiting, hatred, speaking evil of other people, worshiping idol or making idol or cursing people. Swearing with heaven and earth, these are terrible sins. And if you are into them, confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do them no more. I mean their ways. I don't know the evil you are into. All those people involved with to, you know, going to native doctors to make sham for divination, for pan reading, those that are going to bury their grants, all those that are doing all sorts of evil. Remember that a Christian is not a sinner. Confess these things and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do them no more. And if you are among those people, I belong to secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft court. Any kind of courtism is a terrible thing. Whether campus court, whether village court, international court, local court, gather their property, burn them. Anything are collected from native doctors, burn them. Any picture you have taken with them, all the images, whatever, 
God, not all of them, set them ablaze. Amen. You are ways. And if you are among those that are stealing, picking pockets, those involved into, you know, a burglary, breaking home of people, and packing their load, or you are into armed robbery, you use your weapon to break their head and collect their, or their, you know, their property, their money. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Or you're a dupe. You're a front star. You, you know, you dupe people. Please repent today. Or you dupe government and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. And if you're among those people, listen to me. If you're among those stealing from your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your husband, you're stealing from them. Stealing is stealing. Repent and do restitution. Tell them what they have done. Amend their ways. And if you have stolen anything and you want to give it as an offering or money, we don't need it. We don't need money stolen from you to do offering or tithe or whatever. Return it back to the owner. Amend your ways. Or money that defrauded people. All those involved in to you know, giving bribe, taking bribe, extorting money from people because of a uniform, because of your position. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Or you're into fighting and quarreling. You are beating your wife. Or you are fighting your husband, disobedient to your husband. Or you are working for people. You don't do the work. And you are collecting salary. That is sin. Or you don't pay those working for you. That is sin. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do them no more. And mend your ways. I don't know the wickedness I into. Search your life. Those that are into smuggling, that is sin. Or those that take snow, smoke cigarettes, take in their hemp, cocaine, heroin, and any kind of those drugs that destroy people. My friend, you must renounce them today and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do them no more. And mend your ways. Don't sell it, don't buy it for people. Don't even keep company to those who are into drugs. And if you're among those people that are listening to me, you take alcoholic drinks, um, you know, one percent to half percent, local one or foreign one, white member blue coat to be a whole drinks, you don't need it at all, or you're selling it, or you're working there, resign, I mean your ways. The Lord will show your mercy. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know the wickedness I into. Maybe you are among those people that marry and divorce. You divorce your first wife and marry another. Or you just keep on marrying wife number one, wife number two, wife number three. That is sin. Or you're a woman that, you know, you marry and divorce your husband. Or now you're a second wife or third wife or fourth wife. My friend, if you are like that, you have no husband. You are committing adultery. You need to pack your load as a second wife or third wife or fourth wife and go. And if you are a man that married, you need to remove the second and third one. And if you are sending away the first wife, you must bring her back. And mend your way and make peace. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so, as I begin to round up, search your life. Look at the Bible. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse Matthew chapter 19, I read verse 4. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause, Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and their twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Marriage is between a man and a woman until they do all start. And if that has not separated you, you have no right to separate your wife. You have no right to run away from the park away from your house. It is until they do all that such your life. Now, all these people that are involved in to make up 
People are involved into, you know, they put extra finger, extra nose, attachment and weave of famine, earrings and jewelry, bango. They make up their body. That is wickedness. You don't need makeup at all, at all. Those that bleach their body and become yellow overnight, that is sin. Stop that. Don't do them anymore. If you put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment to weave of palmy, earring, jewelry, gather them, bond them. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. I don't know the evil. You see all these people that involve into, into masturbation, fornication, adultery, homosexual, lesbianism. These are terrible sins. And men their ways. Those into prostitution and those that patronize the prostitute. You must repent and say not no more. Or those that are, you know, went into local international prostitution, repent and run away from that. And those that commit abortion, that is sin. Promise God no more. Or you aid abortion. Maybe you are the doctor, you are the parents, you can do abortion. Don't try it. No mother has inheritance in the kingdom of God. All those into higher than such sin, no, those people that are into kidnapping and killing, all those people that are involved into mandatory, all those that are involved into any form of killing, repent today and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do it no more. Amen, you are ways. And if you're a young man that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, you play the hair like a woman, that's abomination, that's sin. You don't need that kind of life. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Such your life. And if a woman wearing, you know, trousers, dressed like a man, dressed like a man, why are you a woman? That's sin. Or a man wearing skirt and blouse, that's abomination. The unrighteous, in fact, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, when they ask for, what shall they do? Do they go after paint, after ornament? Whenever a woman asks for, you begin to make call. You don't need makeup. You don't need bleaching. Those things are the attires of the prostitute. Unfortunately, you are not a prostitute. Therefore, why should be like them? I mean, you are ways. And so, as I round up now, you see all those people trying to dress like the opposite person. My friend, the Bible says they are abomination. In Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, Deuteronomy chapter 22, I read verse 5. And he says, The woman shall not wear the whole person to a man. Not shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination of the Lord thy God. Abominable people can never enter heaven. And so, are you dressed like a man? You're an abominable. You're an abomination before God. Are you dressed like a woman? You're an abomination before God. And you can't make it. Look at the Bible. In Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, I read verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But a fearful and unbelieving and abominable, take note, abominable. If dressing have made the abominable, they are going to hell. And murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. And idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death that shall be cast into hell fire. I pray it shall never be your portion. Now, search your life. May I remind you, my sisters and brothers who are here, my, my Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs 28, verse 13, when I, when it says, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. And God Almighty has made provision for the sins that are past. So that nobody will have a excuse and say, God, do not forgive me. God is ready to forgive you because He has made the provision for it. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 13, He said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Which means that is the blood of the everlasting covenant is referring to using the blood of a lamb without blemish as a symbol in the book of Exodus. But it pointed to the New Testament covenant 
which shall be with the blood of Jesus, that also be made already by the blood of Jesus. Look at your Bible. In John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. What we saw in Exodus chapter 2, verse 19 was a symbol. But look at it. Let us see the actual thing. John chapter 1, and verse 29. He says, The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Animal. I want to find out. Is it an animal? Who? That was what was symbolized with the blood of animal in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, if you come to New Testament, it's just showing what is to come, and that is the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of the everlasting covenant. If you repent today, and renounce that sin today, and cry for mercy, God will show you mercy. And if, you know, as you reject your sin, and invite Jesus to your heart as a Lord, as a personal Savior, salvation shall be yours in Jesus' name. May I remind you, my sisters and brothers who are here, one thing that is very certain, God has made it that without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. According to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, he said, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. Thank God. Jesus has shed his blood so that our sins that were done before this day, that were come to know the Lord, shall be completely remitted washed away our sins shall be washed away by the blood of jesus today the blood of jesus will stand for you and your sins shall be washed away and your life shall be transformed in jesus name so as i begin to round up remember the bible said in the book of john chapter 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed he should not perish but have everlasting life. He loves me and you. And I offer Jesus that we might be saved. Jesus died a vicarious death. He died our own death which we should have died because of sin. Christ died for me and for you. That's what the Bible said in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. He said, why we are yet sinners? Christ died for us. And in John chapter 19 verse 30, when he, he, he died, he, you know, he breathed like he said, before breathing like he said, it is finished. He has paid the price by his precious blood. And he said, it is now all over. And in John chapter 14 verse 6, John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. If you want to meet with God, reconcile with God, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There is no other way. He didn't say, I am a way. If he said, I am a way, it means there are other ways. But he said, I am the way. No option. If you must go to heaven, reconcile with God, it is only through who? Jesus Christ. Now, if you look at John chapter 10, verse 10 B, John chapter 10, verse 10 B, Jesus said, come to me, not to us, come to me. I mean, listen to me. John chapter 10, verse 10 B, first of all said that I come that they might have life, I have it more abundantly. But then, verse, chapter 8, verse 36, he said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, what happened? You shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, what happened? I will give you rest. You see, there are people struggling when, they, when Christ has not come. They try to labor to know the law, to practice the law. But Jesus said, I have come. There's no need of struggling. Just come to me. Praise the Lord. He said, oh, you that heavy and heavy laden. He said, I will give you what? Rest. So, our salvation is free and is full. Through who? Jesus Christ. No need for struggle. Come. If you will come to the Father through Jesus today, your life shall be transformed. Salvation shall be yours. 
Let me show you something in the Bible. In John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 and verse 12. He says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as receive who? What power do they receive? Power of sonship. That power will come upon you. As you receive Jesus today, and your life shall be transformed in Jesus' name. Remember, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 17, he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in who? Today, I urge you to rush quickly at the end of this preaching and give your life to who? What do you think will happen to you? You shall become a new creature. And you shall go on to live in newness of life in Jesus' name. How many of you are ready? Today, salvation shall be yours. I don't know what you came expecting from God. My Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. How many? All these things shall be added unto you. If you are looking for healing, for deliverance, for you know, provision and miracle, all of them is hinged in Christ. As you come to the Father through Jesus today, I'm assuring you all your needs shall be met. God will grant all your requests in Jesus' name. And so as I begin to round up, remember, after salvation, you say, I am born again, I am saved, let us go to war. Perfection. Believers, believers, children of God, let us go to perfection, sanctification, and honor. He see you today as you say, Lord, let your will be done in me. Sanctify me today. The yoke of unrighteousness, the root of evil, shall be uprooted in Jesus' name. You shall be made pure and worthy and qualified for heaven in Jesus' name. Are you getting ready now? All those who are not yet saved, the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready for that? If you are looking for salvation, rise up now. If you want sanctification, rise up now. If you need restoration, rise up now. Let us call upon him. Salvation shall be yours. Everybody pray. Everybody. Oh Lord, save me. I'm sorry for my past life. If you are not yet saved, pray. Ask God to save you, to forgive you, to deliver you. Pray. Everybody pray. If you are not sanctified, ask God to sanctify you. Let's go on to perfection. Pray for restoration. Pray for salvation. Pray for sanctification. The Lord will do it for you. Everybody pray. Believers, don't stop at salvation. Let's do the will of God and prosper. It is the will of God if you are sanctification. It is the will of God, even your sanctification. Sanctify me, O Lord. Let us move to perfection, believers. You shall be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You shall be holy, find the Lord your God, I'm holy. There is no point of unclean thoughts. Bitterness, anger, hatred, envy is not of God. Talkativeness, looking at evil and speaking evil, doing evil, pray that the Lord will deliver you. Everybody pray. Save me, sanctify me, make me every withhold, 
Recavarus Itania, Lord, I pray, save me, sanctify me, walk on me. Everybody pray. Oh Lord, help me. What come me is a love, Razanje, love, Kataya, Rovi, Karuzian, Jericon, pray. Oh Lord, what come your people? Everybody pray. Salvation is coming your way today. Sanctification shall be yours. Let us go for perfection. Let us go for purity. Everybody pray. When you are sanctified, you will pray freely. You will pray without struggle. You will pray in honor, in power. Prayer shall be easy. Presence of God shall be there. And help shall come from the Lord. Your prayer shall be answered. Everybody pray. Oh Lord, have your way. Let's enjoy the Vakataya. Ranga Zandeli can press the Kunlo. Mondia Kataya Maruskite. Jeluvia Karuzian Deni can pray. Lord, walk on us. Transform us, make us that which you want us to be. Let your power, your anointing, your spirit rest upon us, Father, and make us worthy. Every one of us that stand fire, save your people, transform your people. Everybody pray. Call upon him. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father, oh Lord, I want more time. Sorry, Lord, Jehovah, oh Lord, if you are truly sorry and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, can you please raise your hand up? I want to pray for you. You are truly sorry. You want to give your life to Jesus? I'm praying for you. That person who has been committing masturbation, don't do it anymore. The one that is involved into smoking in their name, don't try it anymore. That person into Yahoo are stealing fraud, don't do it anymore. The person that is into terrible sin of uh, adultery, don't try it anymore. You that kill unborn baby as a matter of abortion, don't do it anymore. And even that person that kill another human being, don't try that anymore. Still, the Lord forgive me. And you that belong to secret cause, and um, you know, my wrinkle ask God to show you mercy. You reject them and renounce them. You gather their property and burn them. Ask God to show you mercy. That person having an unforgiving heart, the one fighting and quarreling, keep your hands up and say, God, forgive me. You that spoken evil, mumbled. I have said a lot of things which is not true. Ask God to forgive you, save you. Keep your hands up and pray for you. No matter the evil, you are not homosexual, lesbianism, stealing, robbery, all the, you know, smoking, no more, and you know, taking it at holy drinks, no more. All those evil, no more. I'm praying for you. Now, say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. 
Lord, I promise you, I will never control in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me, and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all his evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your two hands up. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. All to Jesus. Bless the Savior. I surrender. I surrender. Again. I surrender. I I surrender all to Jesus. One more time. To Jesus, mm -hmm. keep your hands up and pray for you. Our Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Father, I present this, my beloved brothers and sisters, before you. Whatsoever they have done against you, against humanity, known and unknown to them, Father, in your rod, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by authority, I break that yoke in Jesus' name. From today, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus Christ. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Lay your hands on your chest. Sanctify me. Sanctify me, sanctify me according to your word. Father, oh Lord, sanctify me, sanctify me according to your Holy Ghost. Father, O Lord, Holy Ghost, sanctify, O Lord, sanctify me, sanctify me.
Now, all the believers, even those who are born again today, you need sanctification so that you will be free from every impure thought, every root of sin. You need sanctification so that you can't entertain evil, so that you hate evil, so that you fight evil, so that you never compromise your Christian life. You need sanctification. Sanctify me, sanctify me, sanctify me, my God. I want to be holy, sanctify me, O oh Lord. I want to be holy, sanctify Sanctify me, my Redeemer, sanctify me, Jesus. I want to be holy, sanctify me, O oh Lord. Sanctify me, Holy Ghost. Sanctify me, Jesus. I want to be numbered among the angels. Sanctify me, my Redeemer. Sanctify me, Holy Ghost. I want to be holy. Sanctify me, O oh Lord. Or you ask God to sanctify you. It is the will of God. Ask Him to sanctify you. Or prove the root of sin. Make you pure. Father, sanctify me again. Oh Lord, sanctify me. Lord, I want to be pure. I want to be holy. Sanctify me or prove every root of sin, every oh God, Adamic nature. I pray, sanctify the church. I pray, the Luvana Kazan, the Liko Pray, present the Yamana Kataira Bamanaka, present the Liko Prema Dubi Razunze, Razan Jacob Pray, make me pure, make me holy, make me every week or Razun de Lia Kazan de Lia, Menos Angel of Yamaruskite, Lord, or prove the root of sin. Pray, pray, you need it. You need it, scientific, sanctification and honor. You need it. Sanctify every root of, uproot every root of sin. Sanctify us, make us every widow. Sanctify our tongue, our eyes, our heart. Present Jelu Vicarusia. Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify each and every one of power. Lord, sanctify us today. Make us pure. Make a way rude. Every dynamic nation, bless us. Lord, send me a capress of honor. Lord, walk on the church. In Jesus' name, we oh, pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I present the church before you. Before the emergency of the rapture. Father, make us pure. Father, uproot the root of sin, Adamic nature, uproot from our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Sanctify us. Make us pure. Amen. Sanctify our heart. Amen. Sanctify our tongue. Amen. Sanctify our eyes. Amen. Father, make us every wheat hole in Jesus name I pray from today 
Let the power of purity be released upon the Jews here. Upon everyone here, give us grace to resist evil, to resist evil, to resist evil. I pray for grace for purity in Jesus' name. Transform everyone. Make us spiritual. Make us worthy. Make us rapturable saints in Jesus' name. And I pray that from today, let everyone that is in this church and has made all over the world, choosing people, bring us to perfection in Jesus' name. And I pray for all the fruit of the Spirit. All the fruit of the Spirit. All the fruit of the Spirit. All the gift of the Spirit. The power of the Most High. Let it rest upon us in Jesus' name. From today, I decree that shall no more be appetite of sin. No more hunger of sin. No more thought of evil. No more evil deeds in Jesus' name. I pray give them hatred for evil. Love for righteousness, for holiness in Jesus' name. Power to practicalize righteousness of holiness. Power of perfection in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? It is done. You are sanctified in Jesus' name. Just place your hand on your chest. I'm praying for you. By the grace of God, we shall continue and we shall make it at last in Jesus' name. Now, I pray for you that I've been having constant urinating and diabetes. I cancel it. I decree today be the end of that diabetes in Jesus' name. And you can never unite more than once this night. You are healed. That person that is having swelling body, I cancel that kidney problem. I cancel the swelling body. Be healed in Jesus' name. The person having lots of memory and forgetfulness, I cancel that evil. Let your memory be restored in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, O oh, ye many people, I cancel that debts. I command your way be open, be blessed in Jesus' name. And you that somebody is fighting you and your family, I hand the battle over to the Lord. Pray that that person be defeated, receive victory, and your family in Jesus' name. Whatever they have taken from you, it must come back to you. My daddy, whatever they are taking from this person that has been so rueful and appear there is no hope, I command that it to be restored. I pray intervene in Jesus' name. I pray for you. Delay in getting employment, I break it. I pray for miracle employment in Jesus' name. And I pray somebody has been mocking you. He is not your God. I command that person to close his mouth. And I give you 24 hours. The mockery will return to testimony. In the name of Jesus, I connect you to favor. And the person will see what the Lord has done. Yes, I will hear your testimony. And I pray for you. Financial favor. 
financial miracle alert. Father, intervene in Jesus' name. A person, whatever the devil afflicted in that stomach, receive your healing. Holy Ghost, deliver that person. Stomach, terrible stomach trouble. I don't allow you to have rest. Now, today is your day. Wherever you are now, the power of God whom I serve will hit you. Sign. Wherever, 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 wherever. Let that evil, whatever they projected in that heart, in that your stomach. Oh yes, that deliverance is going on somewhere. Come out now. Come out now. Come out. Yes, that miracle has taken place there now. And I pray for you. All that ratchets and scratches I cause them to they disappear. <laughs> that case you have in the court, I pray for victory for you. <laughs> and I pray for you, all that evil personality tormenting you, visiting you in the dream. You spirit husband, you spirit husband. <laughs> oh yeah, back. Quickly, quickly. Stubborn spirit husband. Catch fire, come out. Quickly. Don't enter anybody. Enter fire. Enter fire. Enter fire. Out. Stubborn spirit husband. I torment to my fire. Fire. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, fire, come out. Anything that they are holding, I refuse to leave you. By the blood of Jesus, I nullify the argument. Whatever that covenanted with spirit husband, I break the yoke now. Fire, come out. Spirit husband, I torment to my fire, by fire, by fire. That moving object now catch fire. Come out in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Spirit wife, spirit wife, spirit of course, unclean spirit. Spirit of poverty, I torment to my fire. Holy Ghost. Deliverance, Torah, Torah. Holy Ghost, show them a sign that you are walking in their situation. Even in their body now, approve the evil. Every spirit of curse. Generational cause. Cash fire. Oh, yeah. Come out in Jesus' name. Every power of backwardness, of poverty, of affliction, oh, yeah. be broken now. Spirit of rising and falling, spirit of barrenness and misallergies, every spirit of delay in marriage, Catch fire, come out in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Fire. Wherever the tight and close your career, wherever they close what we are doing, in the name of Jesus, I destroy that place. And I release you from that power in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Be free, be free. Be free. Thorough. Thorough freedom. Thorough freedom. 
and you serpentine spirit, you snake spirit, or you catch fire. We can catch fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. But you look wickedly. All those projection and all those evil, I command you, come out and enter no more in Jesus' name. Amen. My daddy, fight that battle. Make a way where there is no way for them in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you that Hainia be cancelled and be uprooted. And I command that mouth or sad tooth pen be healed in Jesus' name. That heart problem and getting weak and that shortness of blood be cancelled, be healed in Jesus' name. And that missing person, I command that give from now to Thursday, let that person come back home in Jesus' name. That person in trouble somewhere be protected, be delivered in Jesus' name. My father, I call for promotion. I call for intervention. I call for victory. Father, intervene in Jesus' name. My daddy, when you begin, you will make an end. When you begin, you will make an end. When you begin, you will finish the work. Now, that project you have started, Father, finish it. I give you from now, now as I'm talking to you, your matter is being visited. You will hear a news. You will hear a news. Oh, Lord, announce that person advertise, adv advancement in Jesus name I pray for favor I pray for miracle I pray for connection I pray that lay that contract be awarded in Jesus name I pray for miracle visa miracle stay miracle citizenship let it be released in Jesus' name. That person coughing and suspecting virus. I cancel coronavirus. I cancel the cough and cata. I cancel that death in Jesus' name. I command life to enter your spirit of life from heaven. Enter your body in Jesus' name. I cancel that heaviness in the head. I cancel that high BP. I cancel that headache. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for you. Let your child return to normal position. Go and deliver like Hebrew women in Jesus' name. That strange woman be uprooted from that your marriage in Jesus' name. Father, settle that case. Intervene in Jesus' name. All I'm asking you, one by one, everyone that stepped into this program today, Father, show them a miracle. Let the expectation of your people be granted in Jesus' name. Now, open your mouth and make requests three definite names. Three definite name, three definite name. What is it you want God to do for you? I'm praying for you. Make that request that getting answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep your request up, your hands up, and pray for you. A Father in heaven, the God that answers prayers, the God of the chosen people, all I'm asking you, whatever they are lifted up, whatever they are presented here, Father, let answer be given to them in Jesus' name. 
I command that bleeding to cease. That fear, I cancel it. That untimely dead in the family, I cancel it. Abandoned project, I command it to be finished. I pray for that scholarship that somebody desperately looking for be granted in Jesus' name. And then I pray for all these ones that are waiting for results that delay. Let me release in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, bless my people. Visit my people. Fight the battle. Heal them, deliver them, provide for them in Jesus' name. Everything lifted up. I declare that it is done. Let your husband come your way from now to three weeks in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? All that request concerning your business, it is done. Concerning that family dispute, it is done. Concerning beloved one that is sick, it is done. Miracle you will be your portion this week in Jesus' name. I decree dominion, favor, blessings, and I decree miracle and then victory. Follow them this week and will follow every chosen in Jesus' name. Say amen three times. Amen. And it is a man in heaven. You are blessed.